Abandoned places and old ruins have always evoked the imaginations of those visiting them. They also become the settings of local legends that take hold of communities, paranormal stories that get passed down from generation to generation. One such country, with its expansive history, haunting yet beautiful landscapes, and ruins seemingly frozen in time, is Ireland. I'm Bleaky, and today I'm going to tell you about the Black Nun of Bonamagi Friary, a woman in black who is still said to haunt the location she devoted herself to. Now, almost 400 years later, the phantom woman is still seen donning her black habit, trying to scare away visitors. In this video, I will share some chilling witness statements which include the entity sneaking up on people, a strange grave ritual that provokes the spirit, and stones from the ruins being launched with deadly force. Located in County Antrim, Northern Ireland, Bonamagi Friary is a dilapidated religious site that has solemnly stood in a state of disrepair for centuries, which has become the focal point of some really chilling folklore. Constructed in the 1480s by Third Order Franciscan monks, the Bonamagi Friary was meant for the McQuillan family, but was soon yoinked by the McDonnell family, their rivals, in 1588. The architecture of the Bonamagi Friary has a mix of medieval and gothic styles. The site includes a church, living quarters, a chapter house, a cemetery and a cloister, which are covered walkways found next to open areas within monasteries. The Friary was once set on fire during a war with the British, but was beautifully restored and remained in use until sometime around 1640. Several earls are buried at the site, including a famous chieftain called Sawley Boy MacDonnell, who died at the age of 85 in the year 1590. Interestingly, an old oak chest was found on the site in 1822, which contained the works of Thomas de Aquinas, a Dominican friar, priest and influential philosopher, which dated back to 1338. Now that's an incredible historical find. There is a legend that claims after being continually raided, the monks decided to bury their gold, silver and other valuables at a point where the light from a candle placed in a chapel's east window fades. Now if that doesn't sound like an Indiana Jones plot, I don't know what does. Nobody's ever found the treasure, or at least admitted to finding the treasure. On a BBC forum, many people who have encountered the ghosts of the Black Nun shared their stories. In April 2004, a man named Stephen Huston explained how he had spent many holidays at Ballycastle. One night, Stephen and a group of his friends found themselves around the grave of the Black Nun at midnight. Their friends were actively looking for the ghost, but after seeing nothing, Stephen went back to the golf course where they were staying at. His brother and three others decided to wait a little longer, hoping for a visit from the Black Nun. A short time later, the group joined Stephen at the golf course. Their faces were pale and they were visibly shaken up. Stephen asked them what was wrong, to which they swore they saw a nun slowly gliding towards the ruins. Suddenly, the figure stopped and unnaturally turned towards them. Her face was pale and her facial expression turned into a grimace as she focused on the visitors. She then faded into thin air. The next night, the group returned to the same spot. Stephen's brother was an artist and decided to sketch what he had seen. All of the others agreed it was exactly what they had seen. While Stephen never saw the spirit himself, he said he believed them. On that same forum, a year later, another user called Dylan Stars corroborated the story as he too was there that night. He added that on the following night, more friends had gathered as they were interested in the story, although some of them were extremely sceptical. Wanting to discover the truth, Dylan and a few others split up all the people who had seen the Black Nun and asked them all the same questions about the night. Unbelievably, all the answers were consistent, all the descriptions were the same and matched the details of Stephen's brother's sketch. To Dylan, this proved that the group were not making up the story. Dylan was more invested than the others, however, as he, two friends and his dog Herbie, had seen the Black Nun on a previous occasion and wanted to know if these people were being truthful or making light of the entity that once scared the life out of him. Dylan said that he and the others had been walking towards the main part of the friary from the small gatehouse. They were chatting away when they all stopped in their tracks at the sight of a pale, luminescent face with dark eyes peering at them from a window on the gable. They noticed she was wearing a nun's habit. 
The evening was dark and deadly silent. They could see the nun moving, but she didn't make a sound. They mustered the courage to walk a bit closer, but she dipped away from the window, but returned soon after, as if she was curious about the intent of the group. They stood for quite a while, just looking at her and each other. Dylan also noticed that the dog had cocked its head to one side, with one of its ears standing up, as if it was listening to something. My girls do this all the time when it's quiet, and it freaks me out. After the nun disappeared, the group discussed the encounter. Strangely, all of them said that they stopped feeling scared after seeing her for a while, and were instead veiled with a feeling of well-being. The group returned the next day and realised that it would have been physically impossible for a person to look out the window in the manner the entity did. Basically, a person would have needed to have been in the wall to look out that way. But who was this phantom nun? Shortly after the Bonamargi Friary was abandoned in the 1640s, its most famous resident moved in. This woman was Sister Julia McQuillan. Julia gave the name the Black Nun even in life, which is believed to have started due to her habit of wearing habits. Others have claimed that it was her dirty appearance that earned her that name. Rude. I guess it's better than being called Sister Stank, although that would make an awesome punk rock band name. It is said that the recluse could foretell the future, with many of her predictions eventually coming true centuries later. For example, she once said that she saw the waters of the nearby Tao River turn red. Two centuries later, this bleak vision came true, when an unfortunate workman fell into the river and was sucked into the water wheel, turning the river Tao red with his blood. Another prophecy that came true was that the Barnish and Cardiff sacred standing stones, which were located four miles apart, would one day stand side by side. At the time, this claim seemed impossible, but when the Ballycastle Harbour was constructed, the two stones were transported and placed together. She also told of boats made of iron during a time when the simple boats were made of wood, as well as horseless carriages. It was just an inconceivable technology, and people thought she was crazy. Can you imagine the reaction if the people of the 17th century were told that the future would have driverless carriages, mechanical carrier pigeons, and scrying portals where people could purchase scandalous portraits of thy feet? The world's become wild. Her most famous prediction was that a red-haired priest who had come from far away to say mass in the Church of Murloc would die the following day. This didn't happen until the 20th century when a red-headed Father James McCann went for a swim just off Pan's Rocks, also known as Devil's Churn, after saying Mass at Murloc the day before. It may have taken hundreds of years, but it eventually happened. Sounds like when it's my turn to do the dishes. Better late than never. While she had a knack for predicting the future, one thing she didn't foretell was her own fate. While it is a fact that Julia McQuillan was a real person, there are two different legends surrounding her death. The one version of the story is that the Black Nun fell from the top window of the friary and crashed down onto the hallowed ground below. The other legend claims that she was murdered on the 13th step leading up to the upper floor. From that moment on, anyone who treads on the ill-fated step is doomed to suffer bad luck for the rest of their life. Now, the identity of the person who murdered Julia was never recorded, but there is a folk story that claims it was the malevolent spirit of a monk tasked with protecting the buried treasure who launched a piece of stone from the staircase while she walked down it. This caused her to lose her balance and break her neck. There have also been sightings of a headless male figure around the ruins, as well as strange stones falling to the ground in peculiar ways that are also accompanied by disembodied whispers that cannot be made out. So maybe there is something to that legend. Before her untimely death, Julia told those closest to her that she wished to be buried at the very entrance to the chapel of the Bonamargi Friary so that she could be stepped on by everyone who entered as proof of her humility. Or maybe this was the medieval equivalent of a ring doorbell and she just wanted to get a supernatural notification when there was somebody at the door. When she passed away, her wish was granted and her grave was marked by a strange circular stone which resembled a Celtic cross with a hole in it. Stones with holes in them, like the one at Bonamargi, were used at marriage ceremonies where couples made their vows while they held hands for the hole in the stone. 
They were also used by pregnant women who passed the clothes meant for the newborns through the hole with a prayer that ensured that they would have an easy birth. You have to remember, there was no pain relief or surgery to help with a difficult labour back then. This practice was eventually condemned by the church as a pagan ritual and eventually stopped happening altogether. Spoil sports. The odd grave is rumoured to have pointed to the location of the fabled treasure when the sun shone through the opposite window and through the centre hole of the headstone. I told you, Indiana Jones. Legend states that those who want to see the Black Nun can walk around her grave clockwise seven times, then back around the grave seven times counterclockwise, and then put their hand through the hole in the gravestone. While I don't know how many people have successfully forced the Black Nun to show herself, there are a lot of accounts from witnesses who share their experiences online. A common phenomenon experienced at the Friary are strange noises coming from somewhere in the deserted ruins. Some have even reported phantom chanting, which despite its creepy sound, brings a conflicting feeling of peace and well-being. A man named Jason Horner once shared a story his mother had told him when he was younger. She said that when she was a little girl, she and her parents were strolling around the ruins when she saw a woman, who looked like a nun, holding what she described as an old-fashioned candlestick, who was screaming at her parents. What struck her as weird is that there was no sound coming from the angry woman's mouth. The girl pointed and told her parents that the woman was mad at them, but both adults looked at each other in confusion, unable to see the nun. In July 2005, Thomas O'Connor jumped to the BBC forum to share an experience he had the night before. He had passed the friary on the way to Bally Castle with his fiancée Mary and his two nieces. After telling the ghost story of the nun that he was told when he was a child, the group decided to drive back to the friary at dusk, around 9.30pm, to put a location to the story. As they walked around the ruins and came out into the church via the side entrance, they walked toward the black nun's grave. As Thomas faced Mary and the two girls, all three of them began screaming. Thomas looked behind him, but could only see a plastic bag gently blowing in the wind. What did you see? he asked. The nun, Mary replied. As he was about to laugh at the girls for screaming at a plastic bag, his blood ran cold as he saw a nun, clear as day, running into the side entrance of the ruins where the famous stairs and potential location of Julia's death were located. Thomas described the apparition as wearing a nun's habit, sandals and having a very pale face. He said that he froze in shock, but tried to convince himself someone was messing with them. He then asked himself, who would dress in a full habit to play a prank so late at night? As is the common theme in all the eyewitness accounts, the entity didn't make a single sound, despite running across stone. Thomas went on to say that the incident scared the life out of him, despite being a 6 foot 2 and bulky guy. He said that he had been trying to rationalise what he had seen the night before, but couldn't come up with an answer. What is possibly the most chilling detail about this report is that his fiancée Mary claimed that the nun had stepped out from behind Thomas. The girl screamed because the woman had a deathly white face and blackened eyes. It was Mary who first suspected it was a prankster, but Thomas argued that no living person could have moved at lightning quick speed from behind him to the side entrance of the ruins. But why is the black nun still haunting the friary? It is said that one of the reasons is due to Julia's sister once coming to her, asking for forgiveness for her sins. Sister Julia McQuillan refused to absolve her. Years later, the black nun changed her mind, but it was too late. She sent word to her sister, but got a reply telling her that her sibling had passed away. After Julia's death, her spirit was doomed to roam the ruins of Bonamargi Friary for eternity. Feeling anguished by the guilt of not helping her poor sister make amends and separate herself from her mortal sins. I wonder what the sister did that Julia thought was so unforgivable. Maybe she took a last slice of pizza, and if that's the case, I get it. After reading these accounts, it seems to me that Julia is not a fan of visitors to the monastery that she once called home. The angry stares don't exactly scream, be our guest. Don't worry, Julia. I'm exactly the same way when salespeople come knocking at the door. The final account may also back this up. A couple of years ago, a reporter for the BBC was taking photos near Julia's grave when a young family inadvertently wandered into the shot. Realising that they were in the way, they stepped into a passageway and waited for the photographer to finish. 
As they did this however, a large stone flew by them and smashed into the ground. They rushed out of the passageway and reported the incident, worried that the structure was unsafe. An investigation followed and quite strangely, it was concluded that the rock had come from a side wall and not the ceiling. This meant it was pushed with great force from behind. Was this the black nun's angry reaction to people in her home? Or was it the entity of the monk protecting the buried valuables who was responsible? Of course there could be a natural explanation like stones falling from an already dilapidated ruin and accounts being embellished out of fear or for attention. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And that's the story of the Black Nun of Bonamagi Friary. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch others similar, hit the subscribe button and then click on the picture of my face beneath this video. It will show you my entire library, including the real story of the woman in black, the truth behind the headless horseman legend, and much, much more. And until next time, sleep well, friends.